You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody, that music can mean but one thing. It is Monday. It is 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. Do you know where Bitcoin is? I guess we'll find out together because it's time for the Crypto Rundown. My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from this fine network upon which you guys are listening to this right now. If you haven't done so already, make sure you head on over and discover the full breadth of our offering out there. You got Boot Camp back there every week now, which I know a lot of you guys are mainlining. You're loving the fact that that show's back. We're glad to bring it back for you every week. You got OPR, they got Double Dose of the Option Block, you got Vol Views at the end of the week, you got Twifo on Thursday, you got the interview scattered throughout there as well. Of course, you got the Advisors Option, a bunch of other stuff that I'm forgetting, I'm sure, there as well. So, a lot of great content for you guys to sink your teeth into. Outside, we love you guys who tune into crypto. We love all of you. But there's a lot of other great stuff to keep you informed, educated, and engaged. Throughout the week, particularly those of you coming from the crypto side, maybe you don't know that much about options. We got you covered out there as well. So wherever you listen to this fine program, could be iTunes, Stitcher, wherever, make sure you upgrade to the full network so you can listen to all that good stuff. A lot of you like the mobile app, you can grab it there as well. And then everything is available there. You can go all the way back 13 plus years. (laughs) And we see the numbers. We see how far back you guys are going. And you guys, especially now, people have some time on their hands. They like to dig a little bit. So we're happy to oblige you guys as we keep on rolling it's time to kick off this crazy crypto train where's our first stop well of course it's the bitcoin breakdown it's time to explore the latest trading activity trends and developments across the world's leading crypto market it's time for the bitcoin breakdown All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we do exactly that. We break down the world, the Bitcoin, all the exciting action that's been going out there. It's been a pretty crazy couple of weeks out there. Of course, we're coming hot off the heels. Last show, during the show, actually, we had, of course, the great Bitcoin having event. The moment a lot of watchers of the space have really been waiting for with bated breath to see, you know, what's this going to mean for Bitcoin and for crypto going forward, is it going to play out like a lot of other having events have where we've seen a massive run up going into the event, then perhaps some tapering after? Or is this going to be the start of a new bullish resurgence for all things Bitcoin and indeed for crypto? Is it going to just be kind of a little bit of a artificial peak and it's going to come right off the other side? A lot of interesting contentious viewpoints on it. Broke all that down last week with our guests out there from Genesis Volatility. Interesting stuff. Hopefully you guys are applying for their newsletter. Actually, I was checking it out before the show. They have some interesting nuggets. We're going to feature some of their data here on the show as well. So if you're looking for to get access to that beta and that platform, I encourage you. Skew.com, Genesis Volatility. A lot of good sources these days for those folks who want to sink their teeth into the option side of crypto. That wasn't the case 
a few years back. You kind of had to really do your own due diligence and kind of put this stuff together and cobble it together from different resources yourselves. Now you have a couple of great outlets that are really doing a lot of that heavy lifting for you and really helping you to compile a lot of this data. And kicking off the show here, we're seeing Bitcoin general. Everyone was like, you know, what's it going to be post having? Well, so far. The blush is to the upside, at least net on the week. A week ago, I'm there in the show. We're at about 85.50. That's when the show kicked off. I think we got up to about 8,700 and change throughout the course of the halving, about 87.50, up about another 200 handles. But coming into this week's show, we're at about a 96.38, at least at the start of the show. So that puts us up about 1,000, a little over about almost 1,100 points from where we were this time. In fact, as of showtime, actually, I do believe, uh, yeah, ticked up again about 96.61. So that does put us up 1,100 and five, to be precise. So interesting stuff out there. All of you are wondering, what's the having going to mean? Are we going to sell off right away? At least near term, we have not done so. And again, a lot of interesting nuggets, all this data coming at you from our friends over there at Skewland now as we get into the volatility. Also, some interesting nuggets from our friends over there at Genesis. I know you guys have been liking the conversations we've had of late with Genesis and a bunch of other players in the, in the crypto space. Going to keep those coming to you. We like to stagger them a little bit. Have some crypto hot seat, then some diving into some quick hits. What's going on in the world of crypto? Let us know what you like. And maybe some firms you guys want us to feature here on the show. There's always a, an interesting array of new offerings out there in the crypto space. And we like to analyze them all and present them here for you guys to, to sink your teeth into here on the show. And, of course, uh, the folks on the Genesis newsletter, they said coming into the halving last week, they saw a large drop in prices, which bit up volatility, increasing the skew to the put side. Uh, and as of this week, coming on the 16th, their newsletter was uh, obviously uh, a little bit earlier on the 16th there. They said, for exception of the 29th, uh, Bitcoin volatility smiles have reached some symmetry. So seeing a little bit of perhaps equilibrium of opinion coming out of the halving. We'll get to that in a little bit. Realize vol right now at about 99% for the 30-day realize. That's up a wee bit. That's up about 20%. Of course, that includes last week's halving event where we saw a lot of volatility. Uh, one year realized... As you might expect, probably not a lot moving that frame of reference right now. So that's still pretty much unched right around 89 to a 90%. But still, one year realized vol at about a 90%. That's a pretty volatile asset. I, I defy you to go out and find a, a major equity or something else that's not like some crappy little biotech that's exhibited a one year realized 90% volatility out there. You would be a little bit surprised. Translate that into, uh, into the SPX and the SPY and see what that translates to, to a daily movement out there. To get a sense for just how volatile Bitcoin is and has been for the past year. Uh, implied out there right now, right about a similar level to the one year realized. It's about 90%. That's 30-day implied right now. That's down from a little over 100% at this time last week. So again, you might expect that. We saw the big event risk happen, which was the halving. And you usually see, expect to see vol come off pretty hard. We didn't see it come off that hard because, again, Bitcoin is still moving. People forget a movement to the upside, to the downside. At the end of the day, that's all vol. People always think because of the equities, downside move equates to vol spiking. Upside move equates to vol coming off. And movement is movement at the end of the day. And we're still moving 1,100 handles or so from last week. So that's, that's still enough to maintain a pretty firm vol, again, around that 90% level. Speaking of volume, what's been lighting it up out there? Let's start in Darabit land first. Pretty active week. Not quite the numbers we were seeing uh, the previous week leading into the halving, but still we saw numbers there around 180 or so million notional. We didn't quite reach that level on Darabit over the past week. The biggest day was the 14th, about 149 million worth of notional going up. The 15th, $1.27. Uh, the 17th, $114 million. And as of showtime, there was about $64 million on the tape today. So not exactly a Rock'em Sock'em Robots day, but a fairly active week, all things considered out there in Darabit land. Let's break down some of the big trades out here and what's been lighting it up in Darabit. Looks like the biggest prints were on the 15th. And that was 300 lots of the May, excuse me, June 1100, 1300 vertical. Looks like it went up for about a .0301 on the uh, 1300 calls and a .0581 on the 1100 calls. Both done when Bitcoin was at 9503. So again, I'll leave you to do the math about what that what that equates to from a. That's so why I hate quoting fractions of Bitcoin <laughs> for your guys' edification out there because so much of you, it's, it's, it's not really that intuitive for a lot of you out there. But say, Lavi, 
That's how these things are quoted out there. You have to back it in yourself out there. Looking at also uh, looking at what the Genesis folks were saying from an overall volume options breakdown out there on Darabit compared to the rest of the month. The average volume they say picked up going into the May 11th having, which is kind of what we saw and what you'd expect. We mentioned that on the show last week, and it has continued for the most part coming out, but not quite again, not quite as robust as it was the previous week. A big trace there, not a, not a ton really lighting up today, as you said. Bitcoin, or I should say, a derivative volume on the Bitcoin options, about, it's about half of what it has been on spikes of late out there. Let's see, skew-wise, we're seeing the skew coming off a little bit. It was 13% showing. Those puts were getting kind of firm this week, down to about 10.2%. Puts still firm, but not quite as much. Some of that obviously reflected also on the fact that general levels of vol have come in a little bit since this time Last show, uh, the Genesis folks, again, in their newsletter saying applied vol for short-term out-of-the-money call options. So this is front month within 0 to 31 days. I saw an uptick going into the halving. And then, uh, and then they also mentioned, though, that was – a lot of people talked about that. But the greater uptick – and again, what we've talked about here on the show, looking at the put skew, the greater volatility uptick resided on the put side of the fence. And that's been reflected in our skew numbers here for quite some time. Let's see. Today, call the put out there. In the options land is down a little bit. It was 75% uh, out there. Now it's down to about 62%. Again, that's in favor of the calls, uh, but uh, not exactly robust in, in really in either direction. So it's kind of off a little bit from this time last year. That's, again, total on the open interest, uh, which is a little bit interesting stuff out here, to say the least. Pun intended on the open interest. Speaking of that open interest, let's see. What's open? Let's go on out. Now, it looks pretty firm. It spiked again last week, and it's still close to the levels we saw this time last week. Darabit at about 533 million open interest. That, that's pretty much about 80%, 79% of the current OI right now on Darabit. Then we've got, let's see, Ledger X and OKEX fighting back and forth. Ledger X actually fighting back to the number two spot. It might be interesting to get them back on the show and see what's been going on on their platform leading into and coming out of the having For a lot of you here in the domestic U.S., Ledger X is one of the few games in town from an overall options perspective. So be kind of interesting out there. They're at about $35 million right now in OI. That puts them at number two with about almost exactly 4%. Uh, and then uh, that's of OI. So this is, yeah, and then Ledger OKEX at about a $33 million which is kind of interesting. These numbers are a little bit weird because they're showing Ledger X at 4% and OKEX at 5%. But obviously that can't be right if Ledger X has $35 million and OKEX has $33 million in OI. And then we've got CME actually looking, popping up there in the rear view mirror of some of these other venues now. They're net OI at about $11 million right now on the options front, which is pretty decent. And then we've got back bringing up the rear at 50000 So... No big spike for backed out here. Let's look here again to where the action is this way. Before we get to that, I mentioned the CME Bitcoin options. Let's jump ahead to that a little bit right now as well. Because actually, volume-wise, and again, maybe another data snafu going on out here. But volume-wise, it does seem like CME was, at least in intraday, <laughs> was doing a little bit of paper there last week. In fact, skew reflecting that the biggest prints of the week were actually on CME on the 12th and the 13th when they mentioned the 10,500, 1,200 vertical going up on the 12th, 1,550 times. And on the 13th, the 13, excuse me, 1,100, 1,300 vertical. So that one was 10 half, 1,200 in June on the 12th. And then the 1,100, 11,000, I should say, 13,000 vertical on the 13th. Both of those going up 1,550 times. Ironically, a little bit of digging out there. Can't really confirm that on the CME number. So it might be a weird little data glitch going on on SKU where they're trying to report some OI as volume because they're both exactly the same numbers, which is a little bit weird. It's also pretty close to what the OI numbers are out there. But we did see some big prints on CME last week. On the 14th, on Thursday, uh, we saw some decent prints. It was the 1100, 1300 on Thursday in May last week. That was kind of active about 330 times close to it. Going up on CME last week. Total vo call volume on Thursday last week in May on CME was 719 contracts. Uh, Wednesday, also an active day. We saw total May volume on the call side, 156. June call volume, 720. And that's where we get to this 10 half, 1200 vertical in June on Wednesday. So those strikes were active. 
just not quite the numbers that SKU is reporting. So maybe, again, a bit of a data glitch. Maybe they're just surprised to see so much paper going up on CME. Their, their platform wasn't ready for it. So a bit of an uptick out there. This kind of maybe these are the days folks have been waiting for. People have been writing in. You might have more questions about that again today. What's going on? What's it going to take to really get CME over that hump? Because they're doing paper on the future side, just not a ton on the options side. We're starting to see a little bit of that change out there. Let's look to, again to... The combined OI across all the venues to see where the action is, and it's still June, 48,100 of, uh, of all the options open in terms of uh, big concentrations, 48,100 in June. The next closest is in May with about 24,200. Then it falls off again out there. So, again, quarterlies, kind of where the aggregation of interest is in crypto. That's just the way it's been for a while and seems like the way it's going to continue to be. The hot strikes right now, notwithstanding the prints we saw this past week, it's still 7,000 and 10,000, neck and neck, about 9,600 and 9,000 contracts on each of those strikes, uh, respectively. So folks lacking themselves some even numbers. Again, that probably reflects the bullish, bearish dance going on out there right now. Is it going to sell off and go break back below 7,000? Is it going to rally and break above 10,000? That's what the options are lining up for right now, and that's what makes a market, what makes things uh, interesting. Getting on out to the future side of the fence now in CME land. They had a pretty robust week. The big day, as you might expect, was Monday. It was having day. 21,001 contracts, to be precise, out there. So a pretty active day for CME. That's the most active day they've had in some time. And we had uh, Thursday about 9,800. Friday, 8,800. And today, a pretty decent day as well, about 8,500 contracts on the tape. So post having, they haven't hit that number again, but they've done pretty decent paper out there nonetheless. Some folks digging into the COT report out there as well, which is, of course, the commitment of traders. It's a bit of a, a dubious indicator because it's obviously a lagging indicator. It comes out a week or two after all this data it has transacted and transpired, of course. But still, it's interesting to look back and kind of sink your teeth into those nuggets a little bit out there. And some folks doing that saying that the OI – has been growing out there on CME Bitcoin futures, and that is indeed the case. It's grown from about $390 million in mid-May to $529 million. That, that was May 11th, actually, to $529 million on May 14th. That was the all-time high out there for CME uh, Bitcoin futures, and again, reflecting the big volume we saw going up after the halving. And again, it shows demand, perhaps, getting firm. Could be some of that love we're seeing from a good old Paul Tudor Jones out there. We'll get to that in a minute as well. And uh, some other nuggets coming out of the COT report as well. Uh, non-reportables, what they term kind of, those are effectively lumped together as what they believe the retail accounts are, are up to out there. They're pretty long. They're pretty bullish <laughs> on Bitcoin. And they have, they, if you look at their report, they have positions totaling about 12,000 Bitcoin, which at the time of the COT report was about 115 million and uh, that's the long side of that on the, on the little accounts. The other side, the dark side, the hedge funds and the family offices, uh, those are they have short positions of about 11,100. So that's about 105 million worth of short positions out there. So, again, I'm not sure how many retail are really flocking into the CME Bitcoin futures because <laughs> that's a pretty beefy contract. But say la vie, uh, they're not exactly a large fund reporting their contracts. So the non-reportables is kind of interesting out there. So it does seem like there's a little bit of a clash of opinions out there between the quote-unquote professional size funds and the quote-unquote retail. Again, reading to those definitions, a little bit of a grain of salt, but still interesting nuggets coming out of the COT report out there. If you're curious as well, the last time we saw this bit of a divergence in perspective, it was back in February. And at that time, it seems like the small accounts prevailed because the accounts in Bitcoin continued to rally. Whether that's still going to play out, again, we don't know. But interesting nuggets out there. If you're curious, check out the COT report for yourself. Just the commitment of traders, COT listeners out there. You'll find it out there. Just type it into your Google machine of choice. Backed volume bot, our old friend chiming in here. Uh, volume coming in right now at about twenty, almost 2,200 contracts. That translates to about 21.5 million worth of notion out there on CME, or excuse me, on Backed, which puts it down about 11%. The all-time high of 6,600 contracts. That was back on December 18th. So they didn't even hit that on the halving, which is perhaps inauspicious out there for backed open interest, though, is up a bit. It's about 8.5 million, and that's on, the, that's on the monthly futures now. Remember, listeners, that's up 15% from the last report. Speaking of Paul Tudor Jones making some headlines, some folks thinking maybe he's to blame for this or 
to credit for this recent resurgence post having because he's come out and said he's called it the great speculation. He says he has about 2% of his assets, which is pretty sizable, in Bitcoin. So he's one of those whales that's floating around out there in the Bitcoin contracts right now. And he says every day that goes by that Bitcoin survives, the trust in it (laughs) will go up. So a lot of folks have been reading into this quite a bit, saying this is one of the reasons that Bitcoin has been up. But either way, he's in it, and he's in it to win it out there with about 2% of assets. You don't see Buffett coming out saying he's got 2% of assets in crypto. How fascinating. How much would the worm turn then? Where would, where would Bitcoin close on the day that Buffett announced 2% of his net worth was in crypto? How fascinating would that be? Let's see how fascinating it is out in the altcoin realm because it is time to explore the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody. Time to go altcoin. Let's start with our top 10. You know the caveat by now. Take the overall market caps with a big, healthy, delicious dose of kosher salt. Use it in your cooking if you haven't. It's pretty tasty. A lot of you doing home cooking right now. (laughs) Much better than your traditional salt. For uh, cooking out here. Let's see what's cooking in the top 10. Number one, obviously, Bitcoin. About one, about 100, excuse me, 177. <laughs> one, that'd be interesting. 177 billion out there, market cap land. Number two, ETH, about 23 and a half billion. Number three, XRP, almost 9 billion, 8.9 billion out there. Number four, Tether, about 8.8 billion. So actually closing in. Uh, pretty close out there, which is kind of interesting out there. Number five, Bitcoin Cash, about four and a half billion, almost exactly. Number six, Bitcoin SV, 3.6 billion. Number seven, good old Litecoin, kind of holding steady down there, about 2.9 billion. Number eight, Binance Coin, two, about two and a half billion. Number nine, EOS, a little bit shy of two and a half billion, about 2.4 billion. And rounding out the top 10, yet again, Tezos, closing in on 2 billion, 1.9 billion. So a decent little week out here for a lot of the altcoin. Let's start in the major domo of the altcoin, aka ETH, a good week. For that one, over the 200 handle, out about 212 and a half coming into showtime. That puts it up nearly 30 handles, about 29 and a quarter from this time last show. So ETH feeling the post having love out there. Let's get on out to the options front and the vol front out there. 30 day realize, as kind of expected, uh, coming out of the having out there, down from 93% to 83%. Still volatile, still close to that 90% we're seeing out there in Bitcoin, but down a little bit. Again, kind of following a similar trajectory as Bitcoin ball. One year realized a little bit more frothy than Bitcoin. It's at about 105%. So ETH moving quite a bit over the course of the past year. Uh, the folks at Genesis kind of chiming in as well saying realized volatility. Did not see a significant boost in ETH like we did see in Bitcoin. Excuse me, in Bitcoin. Short-term vol windows, which are kind of near the front month, are closer to what they term the median fair price of vol, which is kind of what we mentioned there on the 30-day side of the of the realized front 30 day implied similar story down from a pretty pretty impressive 101 percent last show to 87 percent now again the implied vol listeners is the amount of volatility that the options market is actually pricing in when you quote an options price you need to include a volatility guesstimate in there to make that price effectively and so that is what the market is guesstimating volatility will be for the next 30 days right now, about an 87%. Again, just a guesstimate. It can go higher, it can go lower. Hence, we see a lot of movement in those prices. But right now, pricing in about an 87%, down from about 101% last show. The average daily volume is up a little bit over the course of last week. It was about 3.7 million last week. Again, that's out on Darabit. This week, about 4.5 million. So pretty decent numbers. Again, not the huge spikes we've seen, but still pretty strong spikes. 8 million worth of notional on the 15th. 6.8 million on the 17th, and today about 4.2 million out there on Darabit. And the folks at Genesis chiming in as well, saying they didn't see, similar to what we just mentioned, similar, didn't see a significant pickup in volume in, in ETH options around the Bitcoin having event. And uh, similar to what we saw in Bitcoin, open interest in ETH still concentrated around the June 26th expiration. So folks in ETH, folks in Bitcoin, for whatever reason, they like their quarterlies. That's just where the paper lines up. And put call ratio right now, according to the Genesis folks, leaning towards the uh, towards the call side there. That's consensus across all the months. Looking at 30-day skew, it's down a little bit, down from 10.4%, which shows the puts were firmly in charge, now to 4.2%. Puts still leading the dance, but far less than they did 
this time last week. Of course, the Genesis folks like looking at the call side of the SKU here, and they say short-term out-of-the-money call options. So again, within that front month, 31 days or so, they're trading at what they term a healthy premium above realized vol. Remember we said that realized vol right now is about an 83%. So that out-of-the-money call wing is trading above that, which may make some interesting opportunities either for verticals or perhaps for risk reversals. Looking at overall OI right now, it's up to about 73 million. It was 59 million last show. So interest in ETH options growing out there. The highest it's been out there is 74 million. So we're right off that. A million off the highs out there. So ETH options, from an overall volume perspective, at least OI and you know net interest from an OI perspective, looking fairly healthy, even though we didn't see the explosion of vol and volume really coming into the halving that we did in Bitcoin. Uh, still, interesting stuff out here. Ripple, a little less interesting. It's up a bit, though. So if you're one of the XRP bulls who likes it better north of 20 than south of 20, you're happy right now. It's at about 20 and a third. That puts it up about 1.3 cents from last show. So it's been dancing around that 20 cent level for a little while. At least it's not threatening 10 cents to the dark side. Bitcoin Cash, looking pretty good, up 21, almost 22 handles from last show. And Bitcoin SV, similar amount, up 21, just shy of 22 handles from the last show as well. All right, let's get on out to what you folks have on the brain. It's time to answer your crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right, welcome to the crypto questions segment, the portion of the show where we answer all of your many and varied questions about all things crypto. We started off flipping the script last week, asking you guys a question. Uh, we said, you know, the great Bitcoin having is upon us, usually seen as a bullish event for most crypto products. What does the future hold, in your opinion, for Bitcoin? Quite simply, where do you think Bitcoin will trend after the having? Will this end up being bullish or bearish for crypto in the long term? So you can read that how you will. Bullish for crypto, bullish for Bitcoin. A lot of you read it for both ways, I think, because it's interesting back and forth, actually, on this voting as well, which, again, kind of reflects what we're seeing in the overall open interest, overall skew. There's kind of a bit of a push and pull in terms of where people think it's going to trend after this, uh, which, again, makes it interesting, makes it kind of fun. The folks at Genesis saying we're seeing some of that smile start to creep back in the skew, which means that there's almost equal levels of interest in the puts as there are in the calls. So, again... Kind of a coin flip going forward. And that's pretty much how our poll shook out here as well with a slight majority, ever so slight. 52.9% saying it's going to be bearish in the long term for crypto and 47.1% saying bullish. So fascinating. Again, there's a lot of back and forth on both sides of this argument, which makes it kind of interesting. It makes the skews kind of juicy <laughs> and it makes it fun to trade. That's what makes the market, right? Uh, we've had Kenner chiming in saying, as long as crypto represents a threat a threat to the central bank currencies, aka control, it will never be allowed to flourish. So I'm guessing he voted bearish on our poll. Just guess it <laughs> out there. Thanks for sharing that, Kenner. Bells, Bells chiming in saying, is there too much focus on the having in the crypto world right now? Well, it's kind of hard not to focus on it. Bells, because outside of Paul Tudor Jones, there ain't a heck of a lot else really to focus on right now, A. And then B, it's a huge structural change to the product. Imagine if there was some large structural change in Apple stock, for example, that's going to cause a reduction in float going forward, perhaps. That's something you'd have to focus on, because that's just a fundamental aspect of it, reducing the rewards going forward to produce and mine the cryptocurrency is going to have, it should have a very basic supply and demand net effect on the underlying. And so that's why people are focusing on it. But is there too much? I don't think so. I mean, we're an options folks. We like to talk about vol and skew, and that's the having certainly delivered on that front. Perhaps maybe not as much as some folks thought because it has been analyzed to death for the better part of the last six months. Maybe some of that this past week was a little bit of a letdown that it wasn't the huge event some folks thought. So is it too much focus on that? I'm going to say no. But then I'm biased because I'm on the content side, and then we like to have a lot of stuff to talk about. So the having was good for us out there. But, you know, it's interesting. The big focus I've seen, I think probably for you guys too, is not so much leading into the having, but what does it mean coming out of it? Right now, obviously, it's looking good, but longer term, what will this mean? So that's kind of where our focus is on. So I'm going to say no. 
Maybe you guys disagree. Let us know in the questions and the comments. You guys know how to get at us at options on most of the major social media platforms. Or just go to the website. Feedback form works there. Questions at the optionsinsider.com. Don't leave questions in the review forms for most of the major platforms like iTunes because we don't check those as often. So if you want to leave a question, hit us up via the usual outlets. You can use our mobile app to do that as well. And we'll get you here on the show just like Mac. Mac wants to know, what do you think it will take to bump Bitcoin options volume on CME and BACT? Well, I was just alluding to this earlier in the show Mac, I still don't know what it's going to take for backed. I, I don't really know. They're not really – they're raising a ton of money. They have a lot of assets behind them and a lot of big players, ICE, Microsoft, I think Starbucks and others are interested and invested in the platform just for whatever reason. It has not materialized to any substantial volume. I really on the monthly future side and certainly on the option side. The option side, it's anemic, which is interesting because they, they kind of kicked off this whole race by listing their options first. They kind of – preceded CME and kind of forced their hand a little bit into listing their options perhaps before they really intended to. So interesting to see them kind of dive into that race and then not really follow up with commensurate volume. Maybe they can put some of that money they've raised to work driving flow in that product. But right now, yeah, backed options, pretty anemic. Futures a little bit better. We talked about the numbers earlier. Check out the backed volume bot if you want. But I'm still not really certain why the options haven't trend. Maybe some of our guests have alluded to, you know, there's a lot of a lot of talk about the physically settled and delivered contracts that back being a great thing for people to be able to have their coins and use the futures against them and the options and vice versa. Other folks coming on saying that's kind of a hassle for the institutional side to have to deal with that delivery aspect. Maybe the numbers coming out of backed options are kind of reinforcing that. People don't want to have to – they want cash settled maybe on the institutional side particularly. A fund doesn't want to take delivery of a bunch of coins. They want to just have the kind of the cash settled and go on to the next trade. And maybe that's another issue. All the talk and the interest on the actual mining and kind of crypto holder side, much as those folks were interested in physically settled and cleared contracts, the financial side, the trading world, perhaps not so much. And maybe that's why we're seeing this bit of bifurcation because it seemed like there was a lot of heat, a lot of interest. That's probably why their volume spiked back in December when they first launched uh, because that's when everyone was looking at these products saying this is going to be the interesting thing. Lately, not so much. But yeah, the CME options, I want to dig a little bit more into what volume we saw. Again, I, as I mentioned, somewhat conflating numbers coming out of SKU versus CME. I'm going to take CME's word on that because they're the source of record for volume on their own platform, I would think. I think a little bit of a bug over there in SKU land. But still, a lot of paper. It was much more so than we've seen of late. The OI starting to grow. Again, makes sense. 21,000 futures going up. You should see some commensurate options volume going up. Again, it's a big, beefy 5X contract. So... Kind of hard for a lot of retail to flock into that. Maybe we've seen a lot of success with the micro futures on equities lately on CME. Maybe. I've kind of tried to get them to talk about this. They haven't really been willing to commit to the notion of a micro or even a one-coin contract. But I think once we get that, I think that would definitely translate to a little bit more retail paper. Clearly, the funds like the 5X, so maybe they're not in a rush to do it. But either way, the volume is picking up on CME. It's not just weird, deep-in-the-money stuff like they were seeing for a while there, which those were kind of weird future substitution plays. Clearly, there's more afoot, verticals going up. So interesting stuff. I think we're starting to maybe hit that point, that inflection point, Mac. Maybe the halving is what it took to drive the interest. Maybe this volume will go away. Who knows? But right now, it seems like we are seeing a bit of an uptick, and I'm looking forward to seeing if all this continues in the coming weeks. All right, listeners, unfortunately... That music means we're done with this quick hit. Not quite so quick this week. There's a lot of data to parse. <laughs> so couldn't get you in and out as fast as usual. But we like chatting with you guys. You guys, of course, have a lot of great questions. Keep those coming. You know where to find us here on the old network and on the website and on the mobile app and everywhere else you find our content. Stay safe out there. Remember, enjoy the rest of the content we have coming at you on the network over the course of the coming week. And we'll see you back here next Monday for more of the Crypto Rundown. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. 
That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. 